One of the most important things about reality is the reality is pretty random and here in this video I'm gonna show you how to develop a random texture here in Blender. So we will apply a texture in this wooden panel and we'll make it random. A UVW randomizer in Blender. Okay, so if you'd like to know more about how to use Blender for architectural visualization applications, I invite you to click in the subscribe button and click also in the notification bell. So when I post a new video, you will be awarded. Okay, anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So here I have the same scene that I made in the last video, so if you don't watch this video, the card is appear above my head here, okay? But let's continue. Well, here we have this wooden panel and we're gonna to add a texture in this wooden panel, okay? To add a texture here, I'm gonna to be as faster and smarter as possible, so I want to use the Vanilla Tools on Blender, I will use a simple add-on called Lily, called Lily Surfer Scrapper. Lily Surfer Scrapper is just amazing, it's one of the best add-ons that I know right now. You can click the link in the description to download it and to install an add-on in Blender is pretty simple, just come here to Preference, Add-ons, Install, select the zip file, you don't need to unzip it and install it, okay? Nothing crazy, just install that and the Lily Surface Scrapper needs to be on your computer to follow this tutorial along, okay? Also, don't forget to turn on the add-on Node Wrangler. This add-on should be on with Blender, okay? Need, Blender should make it on by default. And you also need to make it on as well, okay? So this is the add-on there that you need to turn on, don't need to download it, it comes with Blender, okay? With Lily Surface Scrapper installed in your computer, this is so simple, man, this is so simple. It's unbelievable how easy it is to work with this add-on. Select your object, I will go to the material preview screen and select the website where you want to download your texture. I will use CC0 because I love CC0, it's a good website. So I will search for a wood and now I will select a wood that I want to use in my scene. I will use this wood here, perfect. As you can see, I have this wood, I can select here in the top of my search bar, I can just Ctrl C to copy the address of this website. I now need to go to Blender, click here and import from clipboard, for, from clipboard and I don't need to paste it, Blender will find it for me. And now I can select the resolution, 4K JPEG is enough for me press OK and instantaneously it will download the texture and apply in my object. If you go to the shading workspace, as you can see, all the nodes are setups uh, are set here and even the grid channel can be inverted if you want, <laughs> what is perfect. In most cases, you can use that to make the texture look even, look even better, okay? But something's wrong because, well, it's all strat, it's all weird. What do we need to do to correct that? So let's select our object in the object mode by pressing tab, press U and click in UV in cube projection. Now our object have a mapping. So if you go here to the UV, UV editing, as you can see, now we have a mapping here, but this mapping well, first is in the wrong direction. So let's select all of these islands here, press R to rotate and pressing Ctrl, you can snap it in five increments, uh, five degrees increments, perfect. Now it's in the correct position, but well, it's completely repetitive. How can we fix that? First thing first, let's go here to the shading workspace and let's remove the displacement. Why remove the displacement? Well, the reason is simple. If I come to cycles, put it in GPU, let's put it in this value here, adaptive, denoising, all the weird stuff that we can do for make cycles work. If we see it in cycles, as you can see, the geometry is completely messed up. The reason is the displacement. So remove the displacement <laughs> or you can just reduce it in well anyway but for this tutorial we just remove it 
Ok, perfect. Now let's come back to the layout workspace. Let's select the, our back part of our wooden panel. Ctrl L to make the link between two objects and I will select the materials options. Now this object here has the same material as our front wooden panels, I should say, I don't know. But I will select everything and now I will press U, Q projection to project our texture. As you can see now it's perfect. And I will do the same process by going to the UV editing and rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay, rotate it. I don't gonna eat it. <laughs> well, how can we fix this repetition? Because I think this is the worst part that we need to do. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the shading part here. And now I just gonna to go to the texture and now I, I will apply a mapping here that will make it random. To do that, first let's press shift and write my mouse button to put this rewrote here. Now we have this small point where we can turn, we can just put things here. It's easier to work because, well, it's just one point to connect, not four or five or anyway. And here we're gonna to randomize our texture. To do that, First, we select our object, we go to the modifier stack and we need to apply at least the array modifier. So our object will be like that. The geometry now is real. Each object is a real object on Blender. So, okay, in the object mode, I will press the slash in the numpad to isolate my object in the local view. And I will select everything, press P to separate all my objects by loose parts. So when I do that, each individual part of this wooden panel will be separated. Now each one is your own object, okay? Perfect. With that, I can use a node here in the materials to select each object with this material and change the color of each material. This node is here in pressing Shift A, input, and I will select the geometry nodes. No, it's not the geometry nodes. Let's delete it. Input object info. Now I have the info of each object in my scene. Now I will select the option random. It will give a random value for each object with this material. This is perfect because now I can take this value and multiply this value by, this value by the mapping node. How can we do that? Pressing Shift A, searching because searching is faster, and let's find the vector mapping node. It's not the math, it's the vector math because our mapping node is a vector information. Perfect. Let's put it up, vector down. Let's move the type of for G of add to multiply. I think multiply is a bit better. And now the, the contrast between everything is too harsh, it's too dark. So let's add a converter color ramp in the middle of these nodes so we can select only this handle here, the black handle, and we can make it a bit less black. Let's make it lighter. Perfect. With that, so if we plug it here in our object, as you can see, our texture is randomized because why is it randomized? Because now the colors of this object is changing the position of the mapping node. This is the before, everything but basically the same. This is, well, this is the after, everything now is looking random, is looking even better, okay? With these simple three nodes, as you can see now, we randomized our texture easily. We can't see any repetition. Let's see it with our backside by pressing slash in our keyboard. As you can see, it's looking great. Let's turn on, on EV the ambient occlusion option so it will be easier to see. Now it's, now it's better. <laughs> now I can see. Perfect. And that is something that is missing here. If you, we take a look in uh, my other rendering, as you can see, each of these wooden ship boards with the plates, I don't know how to call it, each one is slightly darker or slightly brighter than each other. How can we do that? 
Well, we can just do the same principle. Let's select everything here and press Shift P just to make a simple box in this part, a simple frame. Let's call this frame UVW random. Perfect. Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl V to paste. Perfect. And we can take this random value here and mix it with the color of our texture. How? Simple. Let's move it a bit further. Press Shift A. Let's go to the option color. Mix RGB. And let's take this random value. Put it up. Let's put the wood color. Put it down. Factor in the max. And let's change the blend mode for multiply by pressing M. I think it's easier to just press M. Well, you can just press U. It's easier to do that. So if we Ctrl Shift click here, as you can see, now we have these dark parts and the lighter parts as uh, in each object on, on our scene. Perfect. But this is too much. So we're gonna press Shift A and do the same with the color by put a converter color ramp here. Now we can select this needle, this black needle, and reduce the amount of contrast in our scene. Something like that is enough. This is a detail that you can put in your scene with a bit of caution because you don't want to overdo this kind of effect, okay? So, this is the before. Actually, this is not the before. <laughs> let's invert the notes and let's mute it by pressing M. This is the before. Everything has the basically the same color. This is the after. Everything now is brighter and lighter in most of the parts. You can reduce or increase this effect in the way you want. Okay, let's put it in cycles to see how the result is looking in cycles. And perfect. Now we have a realistic wooden panel made in Blender, at least the material, okay? So if you like this video, click like, subscribe and click the notification bell. So when I post a new video, you will be warned, okay? And if you don't saw my last video about how to model this wall, just click in the video that's appear on your screen right now. Okay, thanks for watching and I see you in our next video.